I thought it'd be interesting to do a video that talks about breeding two dogs and what you'd expect to get from the DNA pairing of those two dogs. And it so happens that I've got a litter on the ground now, they're four weeks old, and it's eight puppies bred from two quite different dogs. So it's gonna be interesting to see what we're gonna predict based on the DNA and what we actually got. It shows you a real world example. All right, so, so the male is one of my boys, Mando. And he is a blue and tan that carries cocoa and cream, fluffy moral. So his DNA is little d, little d, blue. Big CO, little CO carries a copy of cocoa. Um, he is um, um, big E, little e carries a copy of cream. He is ATAT full tan points. He is uh, NS carries a copy of Pied. He is KY, KY does not have Brindle. He is MM a copy of Moral. Remember, all Morals should be a single copy. You never read Morals to Morals to produce a double Moral because those dogs can be deaf and blind, so you don't do that. And then he is uh, little L, little L, which means he's a full fluffy. So, and by the way, here's a picture of Mando. He's just a gorgeous dog, I love this dog. Produces wonderful litters, nice big litters. Um, he's used a lot, has had many, many, many fabulous litters for me and a lot of other people. Okay, then here is our dog Figgy. So Figgy is a, um, she is a lilac and tan uh, fluffy carrier. And she is little d, little d, little co, little co, because she's a lilac. She does not carry cream. I think she's black moss, so we'll put it like that. She does the same tan points, A-T-A-T. -A -T. She does not carry pied. She doesn't carry brindle. She's not moral. And she is a fluffy carrier, so it's one big L, one little L. Okay, so that is, that is the pairing that we did. So now, here's the question. Remember, this is statistical in nature. It's probability. You don't guarantee what you're going to get. If both dogs were identical, what we call homogeneous, then you'd know exactly what you're going to get. There wouldn't be any point in doing any DNA testing. But that's not the case here because there are differences in what these dogs have and so consequently, there's gonna be some variation of puppies and it does require that you do a DNA test. Let's look at where the differences are. There's a difference right here, because only one copy of Coco for Mando. There's a difference here because we've only got one copy of Cream. There's a difference here because we've got one copy of Pied. Uh, there's a difference here because there's only one copy of Merle and there's a difference here because one of the dogs is a full fluff and the other's a fluffy carrier. So that's where we're going to see the differences. And you can see quite a bit of variation here. So what would we expect to get? And this is out of eight puppies. So I'm going to reference this to eight puppies as I do this. So let's look at the first one. Well, so here's puppies. This is the puppies. So what are we going to get here? Well, I really should have used different colors on this. It would have made more sense. It would be a bit easier to see. But we're going to get a blue from Mando every time. And we're going to get a blue from uh, Figgy every time. So we know exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get 100% blues. 100%. No argument there. The Coco gene. Well, Figgy's easy. She's always going to give out the little CO gene. So we know that. But Mando can give out either big CO or little CO. So... If you do a Punnett square on that, and I hope we've got room to see a Punnett square down here. So here's a Punnett square. So we've got Mando, got one copy. We've got Figgy, has two copies. What would we expect to get? And you can see we'll get 50% or half that are carriers, and 50% or half that are chocolates. So that, that column gets that, that column gets that. So 
what are we going to get? Well, the answer is then, let me just wipe this off the board so I've got room to show it. So we know we're going to get half, um, 50% carriers. So let's be cocoa carrier and 50% cocos. All right, let's go to the easy ones. ATAT, -AT, it's obvious, no problem at all here because, let me get my pen, because they're both ATAT, -AT, so one of the dogs gives AT and the other dog gives AT. So we've got 100% tan-pointed dogs, easy. So it's 100% tan points. And let's go to the easy ones, brindle, no brindle present. One dog gives KY, the other dog gives KY. So we got 100% 100% not brindle. Not brindle. And by the way, that means that tan points will show up. Um, right, so here we go. Here's the pie gene. Mando carries a copy of pied. Figgy doesn't. So we know Figgy, every time, she has to give out this. Got the wrong color there. Use the right color. There. Mando, he either gives out or he doesn't give out. So we are back to this same situation. On this one here, we're going to get 50% pied carriers and 50% no pied. The moral, it's the same situation. Figgy never gives it out. Mando gives it out some of the time and some of the time he doesn't. So you'll get half, again, 50% morals. Of course, the other 50% are not morals. Let's go with the cream gene. Mando, well, first off, we know that Figgy gives out the EM gene every time. That's the black mask gene. Mando gives out either the blue, the cream gene or not the cream gene. So he gives out this or this. So again, we're going to have half, 50% will be cream carriers. Remember, none of them are going to be cream. To get a cream dog, both parents have got to have a copy of little E because it's a recessive gene like most of these. So half of them are going to be cream carriers. Then the final one, same situation again. Uh, Mando gives out the fluffy gene every time and Figgy gives out the fluffy gene half the time. So we will have one half or 50% will be full fluffies and 50% fluffy carriers. So that's you know, it's a pretty good stretch of stuff here. So what would you expect to get? Well, you'd expect, you'd expect it. Let's look, at, um, let's look at this part here first, that section right here. A blue dog and a versus a lilac dog. A lilac dog has two copies of both little d, little d, little co, little co, and half of them will get that. Half of them all get blue, half of them get cocoa. So we are going to expect to get a half blue that carry cocoa and a half of them to be lilacs. So that's what we expect to get out of that group right there. Everybody gets tan points. So 100% tan points. Half of them are going to be cream carriers. Half of them are going to be pied carriers. None of them will be brindle. Half of them are going to be morals. And, the other, and we're going to have half fluffies or fluffy carriers. That's what we'd expect to get. So now let's look at what we actually got. All right, so I've wiped the board off. We worked out what the percentage we'd expect. So let's see what we actually got. So here's a litter of eight puppies. Well, the first thing is, how many males to how many females would you expect to get? 50-50. So a litter of eight puppies, you'd expect to get four females and four males. What do we get? We got four males and four females. Bingo, we're on the money. So that one is exactly like you'd expect. But I mean, look, I mean, you know, what's the chances of getting all females? Pretty damn small. In fact, to be exact about that, it's uh, uh, a half, a quarter, 
uh, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, a one sixty-fourth, a one twenty. One in two hundred and fifty-six times you'd expect to get all females. So not very likely that's going to happen. It could happen, just like winning the lottery. But in our case, we got an exact mix, 50-50 males and females. That's what you'd expect by probability. Okay, so, well look, here's the litter. So what we have here are five morals, five fluffies. All got 10 points. Gives you an idea about what I'm going to talk about next. Pretty little puppies, they are four weeks old, and uh, healthy, happy little guys. That's at four weeks old, and it's hard to see some of this stuff here in that video, but I can tell you what we got. We got five fluffies and three, three not fluffies, fluffy carriers. Whoops. Three, three fluffy carriers. So, close to 50-50, right? Merles. We got three Merle boys and one Merle girl. So that is four Merles. Exactly on the money. Two dogs carried pied. We'd expect four. So we got two pied carriers. So that was swayed a little bit the other way. We, of course, we didn't get any brindles, so that was exactly right. We, everybody got 10 points, that's exactly right. We had, uh, I'll have to go look at this, but I think we got three cream carriers. Three cream carriers. We'd expect to get four, right? 50% better get four. And then we got, uh, let's see, we got three, four lilacs. We got three lilac boys, one lilac girl. So that was four lilacs, four uh, blues, the carry cream, the carry cocoa, sorry, and then four lilacs. So um, that was right on the money. So it's interesting here. It was what you'd predict versus what we got was extremely close. So why is this important? Well, I start off by picking the right stud dog for a female based on what I want to try to produce and what, I'm, what I expect to produce. And so I had to match up a dog with Figgy to produce what I wanted. If I wanted all lilac dogs, I should have chosen the lilac dog as the stud. I didn't have a lilac moral that I wanted to get morals out of, so that's why I chose Mando. And I also chose Mando, well, she's a fluffy. I want to put a fluffy, full fluffy with to get fluffies. But the point here is, is you want to try to, you've got to pick the stud based on what you want. And then when you get the puppies, you're playing a guessing game. What did I really get? The one thing that you will know about is sex, of course, so you can look at that right away. Then you're going to send off a DNA, and then you want to come back to yourself and say, do the DNA results fit with what I actually got? Sometimes you get a DNA result back that's not possible. They've got it wrong. It does happen. So I use animal genetics. They're very reliable. They don't often get it wrong, but occasionally they do. And so when do I question them? When I get DNA back that I know cannot physically be right. And I say, can you do a retest? And they don't charge you to do a retest. Or sometimes I'll get numbers that just, you know, for instance, on this example here would be, I know I can't get any brindles, but they come back and say one of the dogs got brindle. They can't possibly be, got to do a retest. Um, and then the other thing would be if things are swayed crazy where every dog comes back with a lilac, and I don't get any blues that carry cocoa, what's the chance of that? Pretty damn slim. I mean, you know, one in 28 or something. So the exercise here is learning how to predict what you'll get and then seeing whether what you got fits with the reasonable chance of what you'd expect. That's it. So, uh, yeah. Hey, those puppies are available. They're four weeks old. So now comes the sales part at the end of it. If you want to shut it off, shut it off, do right now. Um, Four girls, four boys. The girls come with a half price future breeding. Uh, there is an absolutely gorgeous little moral girl, a blue that carries cocoa moral girl. I love her. Uh, and then the boys, there's some really nice boys. And there's, of course, there's uh, plenty of fluffies in here to choose from as well. So go look at the other video that I posted a couple of days ago. You can see those puppies. But the point here is trying to predict and looking at what you've got and why does it make sense. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.